Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of really tasty scotch whiskeys that are currently out there on shelves. Uh, the Cameron Bridge 26 that you see right here is a single grain whiskey. So both of these are from Scotland, but this is a single grain versus Talisker being a single malt. Uh, the thing to know there is that single malt means that it's a single one distillery, malt being all malted barley to where a single grain means single one distillery grain being multiple grains, so not just malted barley. Typically it's malted or unmalted corn or wheat in the mash bills here. But Cameron Bridge has been around a really long time. Matter of fact, uh, pre, I think it was like 1870s, somewhere like that, uh, Cameron Bridge was spelt just like this, two words, Cameron Bridge. And now, I guess since then, it was known as one word, Cameron Bridge, but this is paying homage to the old ways, okay? Uh, 26 years in ex-bourbon barrels is what it spent, and it was bottled at natural cast strength of 112.4 proof. Now, this bottle that you see is, you know, it's, it's lost a little bit of volume, but I'm going to be honest, I, the way I got this bottle was I didn't have to pay the $300 or $350 retail on it. I actually ran into a, a friend of mine who was not in love with it, and I was like, I would like to review that bottle, so how about we make a trade? And so that's what we did. We ended up trading some bottles. I got this one, and we both left happy. So Cameron Bridge 26 is going to be fresh reviewed for you. Uh, the Talisker is known as the Wild Explorer. Now, the Talisker Wild Explorer is a special release for 2023, uh, but here in Texas, we just started seeing it at the very beginning of 24. Uh, it is, again, natural cast strength Talisker that was finished. I'm sorry, not finished. It was matured entirely in either ruby uh, tawny or white port casks. So three different types of port casks, full maturation, and it was bottled at a blistering, what was it? 119.4 proof. I have not poured that one yet, but the reason is because I don't need the peat interfering with the Cameron Bridge. Um, the glasses, I don't know if you can read that, but these are old, old Forrester glasses, 75th anniversaries, which if you know about that, Congratulations, you've had some phenomenal bourbon. Uh, but the Cameron Bridge 26 on the nose. All right. Lots of sweetness. More on the caramel spectrum. Sugar cookies. A little bit, the fruits, and I when we first tasted this together, my friend and I, that was the one thing that I noticed, that the fruits were a little bit muted, and it's still muted. There's a little bit of, like, golden apples, but baked. Um, again, it's, what else is there? Maybe a little bit of light white plums in here. There is a good amount of smoky character so again 26 years in ex bourbon barrels but i can almost smell a little bit of the barrel char in it no special finishes or anything like that on this single grain a little whisper of tropicalness now i had to get to the edge of the glass but i do pick up a little bit of papaya and that's about it Spice component, cinnamon, not much beyond that. But it is a smoky little whiskey. All right, here we go on the taste. At 112.4 proof. Mm. Wow. Much more rich on the palate than it was on the nose. Smoky for sure. That's crazy. So there is some peat involved in here, probably. Because that's beyond, yeah, that's peat. That's beyond barrel char. Super unusual for single grains. I've had a lot of single grains, old single grains. They don't usually involve a lot of peat. This one did. But, again, kind of sweet up front. Caramel sugar cookie, right? Just like it knows, it kind of tastes like that a little bit. And then you start getting into that kind of baked dack bowls with a little caramel on it. And then that peat kind of rolls in. And the peat 
hits you initially like campfire smoke, and then it goes into pure burning peat. If you've ever smelt that, it comes through right on the palate. It's slightly vegetal smoky, right? Even a little bit of tar on this one, a little tar rope on this one. So that's cool, and I love it. It does cover up the fruit, though. Uh, the fruit with that light golden apples, those little white kind of peach essence that it has. It's in there, but it's kind of buried up a little bit. The malt, though, I will say this. The raw honey and malt characteristic that it has, it's doing that very well. So to me, if you like that raw honey, malted barley, and peat, it's actually kind of cool. And it reminds me a little bit, now it's not exactly, right? Because it's not all malt, but a little bit of how Balvenie does their peat week. Maybe like the, you know, those 17 year old or the 19 year old right in there. It's, it's gonna remind you a little bit of that. Little iodine to that peat note. Again, with a little bit of tar ropes. It's nothing on the line of like Lefroy, right? It's not that heavy on the peat. But it's definitely there, and you will taste it. Now, that little papaya that I was picking up on the nose, again, it, it's in there, but it's so muted, and it's beneath everything, even beyond the, the, um, the little white peaches, and that's, it's, just, it's underneath even that. I kind of wish it was more a little bit more like my other single grains. I have Strathclyde's and uh, North British and stuff like that, which they're, boom, they're really tropical forward when they get old. No peat, but this one, it kind of switches the game up. It's focusing a little more on the peat and losing a little of the fruit. It's nice, but yeah, it's not going to be for everybody. Super unique. I like it, but I like it because it is unique. Now, this Talisker. Now, the Talisker, they've been, Diageo has been doing special releases for a little bit. I think last year's was an 11 year old and it kind of had like a jellyfish on the label. And I remember tasting that one and it was kind of, it was okay. It was underwhelming. It was, I think that one was just ex bourbon barrel. But this one was again, triple port. So we're talking ruby, tawny, white port. And again, very, very high proof. 119.4, if I remember. Oh, good grief. Yeah. That's a lot of aromatic. Okay. The first thing I'm going to say on this one on the nose is it's actually really impressive Talisker. Okay. And I say that because the last Talisker I had was the new Talisker 10. You know, they've kind of switched the label and the, the two box on the Talisker 10 where it's got a little more orange on it now. And it, man, the Talisker 10 I had was not good. Very disappointing. So, coming off that to know this, I'm like, okay, all right. So, they can still do it. That 10 was, yeah, don't buy the 10, huh? Just in my opinion. Okay, here we go on this one. Yeah, kind of a, this one's caramel, very, very light molasses because it does remind me of, a very subtle maritime rum, right? Like, it's salty, slightly sweet, but I guess that's, the again, three different types of port finish, or not finishes, port maturations here. I get, like, the brine comes off almost like salty oysters or oyster shells. Good amount of peat, but it's not covering up the barley. I love the rich barley tone here. You get a little bit of that heather, a little straw in it. And soured fruits. This one goes into like, what is that fruit right there? Maybe peaches that are super soured, super fermented, like they're getting really old. Peaches, plums. Yeah, 
Yeah, it stays right about there. And then the, the peat also goes into a little bit of like hickory. There's almost like a little hickory smoke. Very, very nice. All right, here we go on the palette. Talisker cast rank, the wild explorer. Love that sour tone. Mm. Okay. Medium, medium high viscosity. Yeah, that's good. Oh, this gall has got a lot of raw honey. I love that. A lot of it. All right, let's run it through. Medium high viscosity. It enters with. I can definitely see, still see that molasses, that rummy type influence early. But caramel, that little molasses hits. You get that little rush of that barley malt coming up in with old orange oil aspect to it. Those are together. Raw honey wax, beeswax is in there. Light baking spices kind of just roll with the whole growing of the whole whiskey together. It doesn't poke out or anything, but swells up on that mid palate. That peat rolls in early, right before the mid palate as well. There's a little bit of like a a barbecue sauce component to this. So like the sour fruits and that amount of peat comes off smoky but sweet and sour type tone. And it just reminds me a little bit of some barbecue sauce. Mm. The minerality, the oyster shell is in there. The saltiness, the brininess of that kind of sea air in with that little hickory smoke. So it's almost like you're having um, a campfire there at the beach, but you're burning hickory logs, right? So you get that wasp of the sea spray with the hickory oak smoke. The peat is clean, super clean. It doesn't even go into like creosote or, you know, this one, the peat was going into like a little tarish. It doesn't even do that. It stays real clean. Again, with the plums, it's really sour plums. I love that about this one. It's, it's very straightforward talisker. A little bit of that kind of on the, the spice component, it's cinnamon, a little white pepper, but it's nothing too big, too bold. So if you happen to see the Talisker, the Wild Explorer out there in the tube or just on the shelf, I think price point wise, it's 120, about 120 to 140, somewhere in there. It's a pickup. I think that's really good Talisker. The Cameron Bridge at 300, 350, it's a pickup if you want a unique single grain. I'll say that. But both these whiskeys coming from Diageo are special releases. But if you enjoyed honest, straightforward reviews like this, consider joining me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. That's how I'm able to self-purchase bottles like this to review for you. So I'm not beholden to any distilleries. Diageo is not sending me any bottles. I am actually out there tasting, buying, sourcing these bottles myself so that I can give you, again, my unbiased opinion. I never review anything I don't enjoy because what's the fun in that? So I kind of just review things I like, and I'm just trying to pass on the, the good word to you. So hopefully you appreciate that, and you'll join us over there, where you're going to get the videos ad-free and two weeks early. Lots of private review libraries and giveaways and stuff like that. But if you can't join me over there, regardless, I greatly appreciate each and every one of my viewers. Keep leaving all those great comments, and I'll get to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.